What we're doing right now stretches the imagination, stretches hard our technology. So we can't do all the steps that we can imagine. We are like the people who built cathedrals in the Middle Ages. One generation builds the foundation, the next the walls, the next the ceilings. We do it one step at a time. Our galaxy is big, jaw-droppingly big. Our sun is just one of hundreds of billions of stars, which raises a question. Could there be another Earth orbiting one of them? A planet just the right size, just the right temperature, with just enough water to support life as we know it. This is the story of Bill Baruki and a lifelong quest to find another Earth among the stars. In his rural hometown of Delavan, Wisconsin, Baruki spent his childhood dreaming about exploring space, built his first rocket at six years old. And in 1962, after earning a master's degree in physics from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Baruki signed on to NASA's Apollo program. So I only applied to NASA. And there, uh, of course, was a huge interest in, in going to the moon, and so I wanted to be part of that team. His first job after college was to design the heat shields that would protect the Apollo astronauts during re-entry to Earth. If you don't get everything right on the design of the heat shield, everyone dies. It's that simple. By the 1980s, Baruki had transferred to the NASA Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California, where he turned his attention to the question that had nagged him since childhood. Is there life on other planets around other stars? There are a lot of stars out there. Are there other planets? We didn't know at that time. Planets outside of our solar system, or exoplanets, are just too dim to see. Even enormous gas giant planets like Jupiter don't reflect enough starlight to become visible to our most powerful telescopes. But in 1984, Baruki had a realization. While he couldn't see the planets themselves through a telescope, he could see the stars they orbited. He asked whether stars could tell him if they hosted an orbiting planet and the answer was yes, with a technique called transit photometry. Transit photometry sounds highly technical, but the fundamental concept is actually simple. Take a look at this star, here. Now watch carefully. Did you see that? The star periodically dims and then gets brighter. And if we were to travel there at warp speed, we start to see why. This star has an orbiting planet, and each time it crosses in front of, or transits the star, the planet blocks some starlight and the star appears to dim. With a light meter called a photometer, Baruki realized he could scan the sky for periodically dimming stars to find alien planets just like Earth. But the technical requirements for such a photometer were daunting. Nobody wanted to try that. But I'd come from the Apollo program. I knew we could do the impossible. Baruki envisioned a space telescope, like the Hubble, with photometers arranged like the sensor in your digital camera. It could take repeated snapshots of 10,000 stars at once. Software would automatically detect dimming stars, making planetary detection much like casting a net rather than dropping a line. He called the telescope Kepler, after the 17th century astronomer known for his laws of planetary motion. NASA wasn't convinced it could work. So in fact, my boss said, Bill, everybody agrees it won't work. NASA set up a non-advocate committee of eminent scientists to review Baruki's work. So I and some of my colleagues presented our results over a full day. At the end of that full day, most of the scientists and engineers in that committee said, we'd like to join your team. And they did. And in 2000, 16 years after his initial investigations, the half-billion-dollar Earth-detecting Kepler telescope was approved. Nine years later, it was time for launch. And of course, it was a nighttime launch. Exquisite to see the rocket light up, flames come out, and this thing fly into the sky. It was, it was one of the most exciting nights of my life. After all diagnostics were run, Baruki gave the order to take off the lens cap. But when that happened, you see the first images of the sky. And it's stunning. There are four million stars in that field. It's covered like sand on the beach with stars. 
Between 2009 and 2015, the Kepler findings made waves around the world. Not only did Kepler find small rocky planets like Earth, but Kepler helped determine that they're the most common type of planet out there. We still don't know whether we are alone in the universe, but thanks to Bill Baruki, for the first time in history, humankind can look to the night sky and say with a high degree of certainty that Earth is not alone, not by a long shot.